All right. First of all, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Rob Huxley. I'm uh, one of the tournament directors for the International Federation of Poker. I want to thank you all for coming today. Um, before we begin, I would really like to say uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart to four very special people who have been mentors and inspirations for me in poker. Um, Matt's not here, but it's Matt Savage, uh, Linda Johnson, Jan Fisher, and Dave Lamb, the founders of the TDA. So thank you very much. Um, we all know we needed to have an organization such as the TDA, and um, I thank everyone here as well. So thank you guys. Give yourselves a pat on the back. Um, very important that you buy into the idea as well. So um, the next gentleman I'm going to introduce you to is someone I met uh, in 2011, and his vision and the vision of the International Federation of Poker is something that everyone in poker has dreamed of. We've all wanted to have an organization represent us beyond just the rules um, and on a government and country national level. So before we start and before Patrick starts, I want to do a quick survey just to sort of highlight something in regards to what we're doing. Put your hand up if you know who Bobby Fischer is, the chess player. Okay, leave your hand up if you know how much he won in 1972 for the World Championship. You don't know how much he won. All right. Put your hand up if you know Antonio Espandiari. Leave your hand up if you know how much he won in the one drop. 18 million. A lot of people know he won 18 million dollars. Leave your hand up again if you know which hand he won with. Do you know which hand he won with? Okay. <laughs> That's kind of my point. Poker has always been, and it's growing, on the basis of money. And really, at the heart of poker is not the money. The money is not what's important. And so I'm going to hand it over to the president of the International Federation of Poker. After Patrick's presentation, we're going to run a little tournament and a little demonstration for you. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, Patrick Nelly, the president of the International Federation of Poker. Thank you, Rob. Well. I'm very honoured to be here in that I've worked with a lot of major international sports. Um, I've had the privilege of making FIFA somewhat more successful than perhaps I should be proud of. Um, <laughs> I've been obviously the man behind driving the Olympics and the Olympic marketing and the success and the finance that we've seen flow through the Olympic movement. And I've had the pleasure of working with many, many international sporting federations, be it athletics, be it skiing, be it tennis, or the creation of the first World Rugby Cup back in 1987. But very few times in my life have I felt that here is a absolutely wonderful and unique opportunity. And to me, I believe poker provides a wonderful, unique, global opportunity. But to foster that, one needs to find the heart of the sport. We need to find the people that have the passion, that have the interest. Who is the heartbeat of poker? So I'm delighted to be here today because I believe, I see, I listen, and now I know and understand that you are the heartbeat of poker. And I hope what we are trying to show you today will have an impact, that you will welcome us and join us and help us on this journey that's already taken much more time than I anticipated, but a journey I think we will all see as being something very successful, very meaning, and I think we have history being made today. So thank you for allowing me to come and speak to you. In simple terms, I want to introduce you to a new experience, a match poker experience, because when I set up the International Federation of Poker, and Please lots go. of people talk about poker being a mind sport and that Texas Hold'em is a skill game. Yes, I accept and I understand that Texas Hold'em is a skill game.
But in terms of the world of the Olympics and in terms of the worlds of governments and international sports federations, the sport should not rely on any element of luck specifically integrated into the sport. So standard Texas Hold'em, unfortunately, would never meet the criteria of being an official mind sport recognized unless we did something slightly to adjust the balance of that element of luck. So we've spent quite a bit of time experimenting, developing. We had a duplicate poker experience, which wasn't perhaps one of the greatest moments of my life, other than I put it on to the eye in London. And if you can imagine trying to organize duplicate poker with pre-dealt or shuffled cards in pods that you had like, no access to, uh, it was quite an experience. But we learned, we learned our lessons. We moved from uh, duplicate poker to match poker, and we've spent now time to refine what we call skill beats chance. And that has enabled us to position the International Federation of Poker alongside major sports and sports bodies because we believe we've now arrived with the solution to have that full recognition as a mind sport. So let me just set the scene of where we are with IFP. A deck of cards, the base of one of the most popular games in the world, poker. <laughs> Millions of people around the world enjoy playing as part of a growing community in the digital age. To unite these players and to protect the integrity and development of poker, a representative voice was needed. It is for this purpose that IFP, poker's first officially recognised global governing body, was founded. It's like any other sports federation, established to support poker alongside its partner mind sports, chess, drafts, bridge, go and Zhang Ji. IFP is not about outdated notions of the game. It's all about the skill of the individual, with tournaments open to all. IFP is also the home of Match Poker, a new variant of Texas Hold'em, which allows pure poker ability to shine through. In championship events, players compete against opponents on different tables and are simultaneously dealt identical cards. And through your national federation, you have the chance to represent your country in team events like the Nations Cup, as well as participating in events organized by the International Mind Sports Association. IFP is also pioneering the development of this variation of the game online in an effort to constantly expand the benefits to its members. So join the IFP today and become part of the first international sporting community for poker. So, here we have it. We have an international federation of poker, uh, established as other international federations under the Swiss Civil Code. We started in 2009 with seven national members, and it was a real struggle to find seven national members. But we managed to get the recognition as being the only international federation to represent poker's interests. We presented and was accepted by the Court of Arbitration of Sport, so we are clearly the International Federation of Poker. Our vision was obviously similar to the visions of other sports, to enable ourselves to be recognized by mind sports, by other federations, by governments, by all interested parties that are interested in sport, so that we can offer a mind sport to the society. Obviously, we've had to take some very important um, bodies with us. We had to develop the form of match poker that we're about to introduce to you so that we could get the approval and could get the acquiescence of the bodies that needed to approve our recognition. We have achieved that. We are now recognized by Sport Accord. We are recognized by the IOC as that federation of poker. And we now know the steps that we need to take to enable us to be able to compete in other multi-purpose international competitions. The nice thing about it is, as we've sought like-minded people around the world, we've gradually been able to expand our organization to now 54 member nations. And maybe with some of your help, 
you can help us to expand into some of the other nations, but equally help us make our memberships here in North America significantly more significant than they currently are at this present moment in time. I believe we have close to another 40 nations in debate, in discussion, discussing with their national sporting bodies to get national federations to be representing poker in their countries. So I'm very optimistic that by this time next year, we will be able to inform you that we will probably be in excess of 100 nations. So what's important to us is that as a sporting body, we do have to um, present match poker as the international competition, that nations will compete against nations in match poker. But we also want to see match poker leagues, we want to see match poker clubs, we want to see competitions at all levels, at city levels, at different levels from universities to businesses to the firemen in New York to wherever there's a community, we believe that match poker has a role to play within that community. However, having experimented, having put a few tournaments together, we knew that we had to find a software solution that will make it extremely simple for us to organize match poker or have other people organize match poker wherever we wanted those tournaments to take place. Whether it was in coffee shops or in pubs or in hotels or in offices, we needed a very simple solution that used the mobile phone and Wi-Fi and that's it. We didn't need cards, we don't need chips. We have all the data, all the hand information, all the records and information we need because we're using technology. And today we are going to run a very small tournament with four teams in this room as a very simple, quick demonstration to show you how we've now arrived at that point so that we can start rolling out our match poker ambitions into a number of test markets a little later this year. We also have our Nations Cup. This is our equivalent to the World Cup. The next Nations Cup will be in Berlin later October this year. We anticipate at least 34 national teams competing in the Nations Cup, but then all the members of IFP in attendance as we present and show our findings on match poker and can inform to them that history was made at the TDA to when the first ever competitive demonstration was taken place. We're about a sport, so we give medals and we will be presenting four medals to the winning team a little later today. We also present trophies, so the seat winners will obviously win trophies. And it's very interesting that um, before we had our events, one in Cyprus, one in Sanya in China, a lot of poker players were very negative towards us. They didn't really believe what we were doing, the fact we weren't using cards, we were using telephones. But I can assure you, once those players came and played the tournaments and put on the shirt of their nations, you could not believe the passion, the interest, and the excitement that all these players had for playing for their nation. It was quite amazing, just the whole camaraderie, the fact of them sitting together to look at the hand logs, the, the passion that they had to represent their shirt. And I would see more and more international competition being embraced in terms of the way that we've seen it during our initial trials. So without any further ado, uh, I thank you for your time. I look forward to working closely with you. And I'd like to hand back to our tournament director who's now going to organize a small four-team tournament using our technology here this afternoon. Thanks, Patrick. So to kick things off, I've actually pre-selected four tables. One of the tables will be uh, four members of the board. So if I can please ask for table four to all please come forward. Everyone who was at table four, you guys should be up the back there. 
You guys could all come forward for me. And if I could ask the board also to please stand up, the four team captains, just to come forward over here. And I'm going to congregate you all into your teams. And yes, you have to wear your hat. So if you guys can just uh, come down here. Neil, you're uh, Team Yellow. So team yellow. Who's, uh, who's the yellow? You left your hat. Where's your hat? Oh my goodness. So team go Team Yellow. Jan, you're pink. Yep. Linda's Team Green and Matt is Team Blue. So, green, go and join your team captain. There we go, that's good. Linda's team. Yellow. Okay. You're actually on Neil's team now. Genie. Okay, so what you see here represents one table. Well, actually, technically two tables. The team captains and then another player. So the team captain, for example, will be Neil. He's in seat one at table one. What happens in match poker, very briefly, is you play a single hand of... It would be good if I had a good... Can I just use one of these? Hello. What if I turn? Thank you. So the way it works, we have four tables. Neil will be in table one, seat one, and he'll play one hand of poker against four other players at his table, and then the chips will reset. So you'll start with a fixed amount of chips, and in this demonstration will be 10,000. You play one hand of poker, and then the hands will reset, and you'll start with a fresh stack of chips. Okay? So not only is he playing that hand of poker versus the other three players at his table, but he's being scored against everyone else at seat one at the other tables, which are being dealt exactly the same cards. So now, there's no luck. Same flop, same turn, everyone in seat two and three and four all getting exactly the same cards. So now we have eliminated luck, technically. There's a little bit left. So that's basically what we're doing. Can I please get uh, table three to come on up and join your teams? Table four, you can all go back to your seats for me. Table four. Head back, take a seat. I'm going to give you your devices. With your commissioner. So yellow, you're with Team Neil. Loving these hats, by the way. These are the classiest pieces of merchandise I've ever seen. <laughs> yellow, you're with Neil. You're with Matthew. Okay, so say hello. Make sure you win. Okay. So once again, to reiterate, you're going to play against each other at your table, but you will be scored against your respective seat number at the other tables. And now as a team, the way we score it is we take your total chip count. So team Neil, for example, the culminative score of all the seats on his team, table one, seat one, two, three, and four, how did they rank against the other players at the other tables and the other seats? Did they win more or did they lose more chips? And that's how you score. Okay, guys, can you go back to your tables, please? There'll be a commissioner waiting for you with your devices. Table two, come on up, table two. And where's Bill? He's not here. All right, there he is, just in time. Oh, oh. This is where you give the prep speech. Don't play like crap. Make sure you, you know, don't dump your chips. Okay. 
All right, you guys have introduced you, give them the speech. You know to play well. Okay, guys, you can head back to your table. Table two, take your seats. So we're going to play a very quick ten hands. If we can invite the board back up, we're going to create a little virtual table up here. Uh, can we grab just two chairs? Matt, do you want to grab a chair and come around here for me? Thanks, Muppet. Yeah, one more. Seat two is Jan, yeah, she's taking all down. Oh yeah, hey, what's the hell? You're going to be with Maddie. You're in seat two. That's okay, there is no one player going to hand that one. Oh, okay, that's right. Well, you don't want to share hand. No, four one, number four. Yes. You're in seat three, okay? All right, our commissioners are just going to log in the players. And once again, just to reiterate, guys, this is a mind sport. This is what poker needs if it's going to advance to a point where, as a player, you represent your country and you play for prize money that you didn't put in yourself. We're never going to get there the way we're going. Team Knit. Team Knit. So what we're going to do is we're going to play 10 hands. And at the end of the 10 hands, we'll do a little ceremony for the best team, the winning team. And then we'll also award the individual players, the best player in seat one, the best player in seat two, seat three, and seat four. And the real power with match poker, and the reason why match poker is the only form of poker that will sportify the game, is statistics. You don't have statistics in regular poker. How many caches? How much did I win? That's not a stat. How much money have you entered in your life? No one talks about that. Is not a stat. Okay. All right. You good, Varun? Joe, you good? You good? So when we, ran, when we ran in 2014 the European Nations Cup, so something really extraordinary happened. In between each session, the teams would come back together and we essentially gave the players all information. Full transparency. You want to see how that player played that hand? Remember that big hand, ace, jack, I can't remember. You can go back and look at that and talk to your team about how you played that particular hand versus how other teams played that hand. So it really opens it up. Okay, we have four tables checked in, four players ready to go. As the tournament director, I'm going to say shuffle up and deal, but it's, of course, on a tablet. So I'll hit start. And confirm. And the tournament has begun. So players at each table. And feel free to stand up, guys, around the room and watch one of these tables if you'd like. And real quick comment. So you, you said there's no luck involved whatsoever? Not whatsoever. There is obviously different variations in players' skill and how they play. Okay. Uh, the guy in seat one might be very aggressive. Yeah. The guy in seat one at the other table might be very passive. Right. That obviously changes quite That's a lot. Good. If there was no luck, that wouldn't be fair because then Helmuth would win every one of these events. Well, we'll see, I guess. We shall see. One of the things you have to really... There, there are many unique elements to this type of tournament poker the obvious one is communication between tables no. so the way we're playing it is pot limit pre-flop pot limit pre-flop no limit after the flop correct pot limit pre no limit after
you guys still on hand one, right? Clock. Call the clock? Yeah, call the clock. <laughs> That was a reasonable amount of time. Like, okay. Absolutely. Are the, are the four of us playing against each other now? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. So you're all playing this individual hand against each other. Or quadruplets, I guess. However, you're being ranked and scored. Are we good, Penny? Joe, have you finished your first hand? Varun, you finished your first hand? All right. Let's deal hand two, guys. Go ahead. Deal as you can start hand two. In a minute, in a minute, easy, easy. Not yet, not yet. So we've played two hands, guys. I can tell you from looking at this that everyone in, in Team Yellow is currently in the lead. So if you're in the Yellow team, you're winning right now. Congratulations, you're in the lead. Matthew, you're in second place with Team D. And then B and C are rounding out the field. Go ahead and deal hand three, guys. We can deal hand three. Dealers, keep dealing. So we won't be going hand for hand anymore. We'll just finish off the rest of the ten hands and then open it up for discussion. So, we're just going so table commissioners, keep dealing. Deal out the remainder of your hands. We'll be playing 10 hands and then an award ceremony. This is the uh, scoreboard. So I know the player A4 is currently the only player winning. I can reset up every hand. Now team A is still in the lead with eight points. B, D and C. So after two hands, Neil's team, Team Yellow still in the lead. Team Yellow still in the lead. Well done. We're just going. And one of the things that's very interesting about the format. Okay, one second. Tech support. Table two. Tech support. Table two. We need a decision on table two. So one of the things that's very unique is that you have the information on everything. Table one, let's deal. Is that me? Okay. Pat, you got the you can deal? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we need to make sure that no one's watching the live stream as Neil is showing all of his cards to the live stream. So other teams don't watch the live stream, whatever you do. Good. <laughs> so in Cyprus and Sanya, we had unique issues from a tournament director's point of view. Clearly, you cannot allow players to communicate between tables. Table one up here is obviously going very quickly. They're at hand number five. Table two, however, might be behind hand number two, they, they cannot communicate information about previous hands. Yeah.
So after three hands, Team Knit, as they're now being called, is still in the lead. Jan, your team is in second place. Matthew, you're trailing very badly. Yeah, it does, yeah. Small glitch. <laughs> and one of the unique things we did in Cyprus and in Sanya is we actually gave players real chips. And this was a very, very good idea in my opinion. When you take away chips, you take away a huge part of the game in my opinion. So because the chips reset at the end of every hand, it's quite easy actually to manage. Players just grab their chips, reset to 10,000, and away you go again. There's so much information in chips that you don't get when you remove them from the game. After the fourth hand, Team A, Team Nit, and Jan are now tied. It's a tie, currently a tie, 13 points each after four hands. Matthew's team is falling terribly behind. If you're unfortunate enough to get Team Savage, I apologize in advance. Although he does want the rights to all future IFP hat purchases. <laughs> well, guess what? The same guy in seat four won more than you. So good question from Matt. He said, I've played two hands and won four of them. Why am I not winning? Was, the simple answer is he, he won less chips than the same guy on the other table. That's your answer. <laughs> so we're now five hands in. And the new update... Jan, your team is in the lead. Yay! Team B takes the lead. Neil, you're falling into second. You're two points behind. Team C and then D, Matthew. Well, we won't score too much. So the other unique thing about match poker is that because we have all the information, we have literally every single drop of information about how a player bet, checked, folded, how much did they bet, we can score this any way we want. Anyway, you can score it however you like. Absolutely. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. But losing less than everyone else. Yep. Absolutely. You play better than everyone else, though. There you go, exactly. So what I would invite everyone to do tomorrow, or any time tomorrow, is come up and see us. We have a little table outside. On the back of the information sheet that's in your bag, there are five very unique questions that you'll only ever get in a match poker tournament. What do you do if a player doesn't show up in a team? How do you handle that situation? Very unique questions, and we'd love to discuss them with you guys. Myself, personally, I'd love to discuss them with you. Team B still firmly in the lead. Team C, you're in second. 
Matthew needs a miracle to win this thing. A miracle. Team's letting you down. Maybe you're the player of seat four. Maybe you're the best player in seat four, man. You're the president? Of course we do. Uh, oh, yeah. The IFFP. That's nice. There we go. Where are you from? Los Angeles. Los Angeles based in Los Angeles. I'm the tournament director out there for the new facilities that we're building. So clearly the biggest challenge facing you when you run a match poker tournament is reducing the opportunity for players to talk or communicate. Clearly that has to be zero. What's that? We're here all day tomorrow running some tournaments out okay. for staying, so you want a bit of time for us and um, we'll be here. Can I hit the, hit the top one? <laughs> all right, so we don't want to... What we don't want to see is people saying, oh, I had this or I had that. It's very important. You guys are done? You can come back and take a seat. All right, Joe, are you done? Varun, are you done? You finished? Varun, you finished? Penny, are you finished? Everyone's finished? All right, if everyone could just take their seats one more time. We're ready to announce the results. So guys, if you could just take your seats, a few more things. We're going to do a quick presentation to the winning teams and also the winning players in each individual seat. So take a quick seat. Everyone, if I just get your attention, please. If you can all just take your seats. Thank you. So one of the things you may notice, and one thing that becomes very clear is that as a tournament director, you have to segregate these tables. Clearly, if you're playing hand number five and you're at another table and they're on hand number three, they know that next hand pocket aces might lose. So you don't want that player 
to message his teammate, for example, at the other table, hey, make sure you fold your aces, okay? So that's a unique challenge. And in Cyprus, we ran 13 teams. Basically, well, clearly, <laughs> no cell phones. <laughs> Thanks, Jan. <laughs> but we segregated each table. And one of the things, um, if you look inside your bags, you'll see five short questions. How do you handle certain situations? And they're very, they're very good situations. What do you do to a player that yells out in the middle of a hand, I had quads. Well, everyone knows that those other tables, if they haven't played that hand yet, someone's going to get quads. So how do you panelise that player? You know, there are unique features in a match poker tournament. So now, the moment you've all been waiting for. The winning team. Or do we want to do individuals first? Let's do individuals first. Can we do the individual seats? It's all about the players. Okay, so we'll do the winning teams. First of all, in last place. In last place, representing Team Green. Sorry, guys. Team Green. Linda Johnson, uh, what were you doing? Oh, Tab. There was a ring in. For you guys who don't know, something really interesting. Uh, Linda and Jan, many, 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 well, a few years ago, sorry. They actually ran a match poker tournament with real cards, real chips. They were the first ones, to my knowledge. Okay, so this has been done before. There's not a new idea. The technology you're seeing here today is what's needed to make it work. So congratulations, uh, Team D. Sorry about that. Um, coming in, in a, uh, with 23 points, representing Team Yellow, was Neil's team. Yeah. He did. So if you were in the yellow team, sorry, stay seated. So now if I could please have the pink team, everyone from Team Pink up here, then also everyone else from, um, where are we, the yellow team. So the pink and yellow teams, please, pink? Sorry, uh, blue, blue and pink. We're about to find out. So all the team pink and all the team blues, please come up. In case you were wondering, Matt did win 40000 on the last hand. Has nothing to do with the fact that uh, everyone went all in on the last hand either. <laughs> so get together in your little teams. We're missing one blue. Where's your other blue? Where's our blue? We're missing a blue? He's gone. Okay. <laughs> so, the way we score, guys, real quick. We take the total score from each team. How many chips did you win as a team, congregated? And if your team won more than each other team, or lost more, simply a linear scoring system, four points for the number one team on that hand. Three points for the second, two, and then one point. And as I said earlier, what we would really like to get involved with the TDA community is finding ways and fine-tuning the scoring mechanism. Because I think with the information that we have, and we literally have everything, we can find the ultimate way of scoring and representing who was truly the best team, who was truly the best player. So without further ado, I'd like to give it up to the winning team at the 2015 Tournament Directors Association Summit Coming back from last place, Team Blue, well done, Matthew Savage's team. And just to clarify, they won by half of a point. They won by half of a point. Team Blue, what are you doing? Come up, you've just won the first ever. Give this man a round of applause. I'm going to invite up uh, three other members of the IFP. Guys, if you want to come up. As Patrick pointed out, this has been uh, a long journey, 2009 up until now. And um, this journey wouldn't be possible without the help of a few key individuals. Um, not only Patrick's vision, 
uh, his knowledge of federations and sporting organisations, but there are some really special people I want to introduce you to right now. Uh, this gentleman here, come up. This is uh, Joe Bernard and Varun Goenka. These are the guys that put in the hard work behind the scenes, uh, and without their help, we wouldn't be here today. So thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. Okay, and uh, before we move on, the winning seats. So who was the best player in seat number one? Is that right? So can I please get the best player in seat one, Danny Wade. Come on up, Danny. Where are you, Danny? Well done, Danny. <laughs> seat two is Randall. Well done, seat two. Not you? Are you sure? This is him. Oh, right, okay, so then where's, where's Danny? So you played two people, is that what you're trying to tell me? <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> the player of seat three, representing Team Pink. Come on up, Bill. Table two, seat three, table two, seat three. Well done. You were the best player, sir, in seat three, and the best player in seat four. Well, can't believe it. Yeah, this is uh, seat three. Can't believe I'm about to say this. The best player in seat four. Somehow. <laughs> what happened? Matthew Savage, best player, seat four. Well done, Matt. The one and only future poker hall of famer. If you'll pay close attention, you can see his head swelling right now. <laughs> Who's the best overall? Who's the best overall? I'll hold on to that. I'll give that away. Can you get Hendon mob flags for this? Just... There's no overall. Okay. So before we wrap up, Patrick would just like to say a few more things. Thank you, everyone, for um, taking part in this unique demonstration. Hopefully, We've given you some insight into the activity that's been going on behind the scenes. I know pretty much all of you before today had no idea who the International Federation of Poker was. And you probably didn't realize that there are actually 50 plus nations uh, set up around the world, which is such an important foundation to take this to where it needs to go. Um, I dream of a day where I award someone like Matt being the best player uh, a prize and cash or whatever it is that they didn't put up. And we'll never get there in the current model. We just won't. And it's only going to get there when poker is truly a mind sport. So thank you very much, everyone. Here's Patrick again. Thank you, Hux. Thank you, team. Just to make a couple of points, we are all here tomorrow. We will be playing um, some tournaments outside, so we'd love to spend some time with you, talking to you, we do really seek your help and your guidance. But one thing I just want to say, and our, our Chinese friends here have been a tremendous boon to us because we set them a task that this wasn't just about us organizing tournaments. We know we can do that. As Huck says, we can use tables, we can use chips, we can use our telephones. But we wanted a solution that says that if six people or eight people, 12 people, anybody around the world in any location, in any bar, in any home, in any office, in any fire station, in any hospital, in any supermarket, wanted to just stop, log on, and be able to play match poker with your own iPhone, so all you need is your phone and a Wi-Fi. Can you deliver it? They have delivered it. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick.